Welcome back. You're watching our continuing coverage here at Davos 2023. I'm Shireen Pan and I'm joined by David Kenny, the chairman and CEO of Nielsen. David, thanks very much for joining us here in Davos. Well, you know, it worked out well. We were supposed to meet in India, but we meet here. So I can get to ask you about the big message that you take away from your visit to India. Well, as you know, I was there last week, Shireen, and I was so excited to meet with a number of CEOs and government officials. And... Um, the policies of India are working. It is its moment. It feels really working well together between public and private sector, taking advantage of the economy. And I think there's a reason India continues to grow when so many other countries are facing some headwinds. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the opportunities in India, and specifically from a Nielsen perspective, uh, you know, how are you reading the changes that we have seen, significant changes in the way that people are consuming uh, media today? Well, we think it's a real opportunity to serve the consumer better. As you know, India is a very heterogeneous community. And so having more ways to reach them with streaming as well as linear means more people can find content that's relevant to them. And in some cases, even create content and participate. Mm. So I really think, um, so that's one thing. I think the other thing is the, the just growth of the mobile networks, the investment in the infrastructure, innovations like Geo have really put um, a mobile television in everyone's hands everywhere. So I think it's, uh, it's been great to organize people and really serve them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every few months uh, we hear stories about this is the end of television, this is the end of linear television. Uh, what's your take on what you see happening, not just in India, but globally as well? So, so linear television has a role, especially for live. So here we are in yes. a live event, live news live sports the best way to deliver them is over a broadcast signal you know in a live approach and so i i think it continues to work for those reasons the ipl has never had more fans so um and news has never been more important so we see this happening entertainment um people do have more choices some people like to catch up and watch it you know on streaming later so the the linear creates some demand it creates some exposure but it's shifting I think the idea that it's over would be like saying print is over. It, mm. it has a role, but I have to say every linear company has a digital first strategy in India. I didn't find anybody who was nostalgic about the past. People were really leaning forward to their streaming platforms and their content on other people's streaming platforms. Yeah, I, I think that is, but everyone's grappling with how to make that transition uh, while you are sort of protecting the present and attacking the future. But, you know, what are the trends emerging at this point in time in terms of spends, in terms of the kinds of spends that we're likely to see on digital over the next few years? Well, and, and part of what we were doing to help people with that transition, and we're doing this in a number of markets, is evolve the measurement so that you don't measure linear and streaming as two things because then you end up with a high price on linear and a low price on streaming in some cases when the value is the same. So we're really working to get a, a measurement that's people-based so that we measure where people spend their time, whether they happen to receive it on a linear signal or a streaming signal, because to them it's the same. The ad is the same, the impression is the same. And when, as this happens, you can build a better model because then your economics are aligned with the consumer and you can follow her through on the ad side. Mm. The subscription side is changing, um, but, it, but if we give people a true view of 100% share, they can make better decisions about how they want to price the subscription and what they want to do with the free ad sponsored models as well. Mm -hmm. You talked about economics and uh, one of the things that we've seen specifically this time around is the kind of money being spent on digital rights, uh, for instance, for the IPL, etc. Uh, how are you reading that in terms of a trend going forward? I think it continues. There's, uh, the rights of sports are just so valuable. Be because as entertainment has become fragmented, the only time you bring large groups of people together is for live events. Sports for everyone. News also brings people together, but, it, but a news program like this brings a certain mm. sub segment together, right? The business people. And so if you really want to build a brand, reach the population, you need sport. And everyone knows this. The, the linear guys have long known it. The digital guys have figured it out. They're also competing for subscriptions. You know, and I would say as, as people move to digital subscriptions, having sports in your portfolio helps make you attractive, helps make your subscription sticky. So I think uh, it's good for the sports leagues. They're going to continue to have uh, bidding wars for their content. Yes, we've certainly seen that play out. Uh, what are the, the next areas of disruption that you're going to be watching out very closely? 
So if, if I continue in sports, I'm looking at, at uh, adjacent content. So betting is something happening in a number of countries where it's legal. Um, other ways of fan engagement, the connection between esports and live sports. So we're, we're certainly watching that. I'm watching a lot, um, and I'm so glad you do uh, Female Forward, because we're watching a lot about equity and inclusion. People who are making an effort in sport to include women, in content to include include women directors, women producers, folks who are looking at different ethnic and racial representation are actually the ones who are growing because people have choices. They're finding people like them. Yeah. Women don't have to just accept a male-dominated program anymore. They can find programs by women for them. And I think it's half the population. So um, a lot of expansion by focusing on equity and inclusion. Well, we've got the women's IPL now, so I... I it's I'm, a start. It is a start, and it's a big start. It's a meaningful start. But, you know, globally, uh, the trends for 2023 that you're going to be watching out for? Globally, we're certainly looking at the economy. Um, the, 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 the war in Ukraine, energy prices, um, central, central banks having to watch inflation. This is all going to slow down the economy. It's going to cause people to be smarter about where they spend their ad dollars, how they build their brands. Some are unfortunately going to short-term uh, promotional work, and we're really trying to help them understand that will be a problem in 24 and 25. So I want you to see that we and everyone are managing, certainly to be prudent in 23, but build brands because things will come back in 24 and 25. You know, the economy needed to go through a cycle post-COVID. Um, I think central banks are doing a good job of managing policy and including yours. And so I think it, it can be a soft landing and marketers, brands, programmers all need to manage through that. So that's one. I think secondly, I'm spending a lot of time understanding, and this is where Nielsen has a lot of work that we're doing, understand the consumer. She's changing the way she interacts with media because she has more choices and she has more control. She doesn't need to be limited by a linear schedule anymore, except for, for live programming. And so how she adapts to that, how many services she subscribes to, what kind of habits get built, how much they get overwhelmed by having to make choices and actually want the choices made for them. This is changing, this no one right answer, but we're spending a lot of time understanding the consumer behavior. Well, yes, and I, I think the playbook is still evolving and still emerging, and no one has the right answers, all the answers at this point in but time. You but you need data, that's right, why we're there. But you need data, and that's where you come in. So, David, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us here in Davos. We wish you the very best of luck, and uh, look forward to seeing you back in India. Thank you so much, Shreen. See you soon. Well, we will take a break. The conversations continue here at Davos 2023. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute with more.